I've been grinding my teeth to get behind this microphone, and I want to thank you all for being there. The media, the Democrat Party, the ruling class that runs this country will do anything to hold on to power. They don't care if Kamala Harris has the IQ of a walnut. They don't care if she flips and flops and flips again like a flounder on the ocean beach. They don't care. They lied about Biden and then pretended they didn't. Then they removed him when his numbers were unsustainable. Then he installed her without a single vote from an American citizen, without a single vote from a Democrat. The American media have done this before. They covered for Woodrow Wilson when he had a debilitating stroke and was utterly and completely dysfunctional. And his wife ran the country for a year and a half. They did the same when Franklin Roosevelt ran for his fourth unprecedented term like a dictator. They reported him to be in excellent health when he was dying from the moment the first vote was cast. And he died in office. They lied about John Kennedy's conditions. And they are lying to you right now. They lied about Joe Biden day in and day out, regardless of what you saw and what you heard. Because the media in America don't represent the American people. They represent a part of the population. They represent the Democrat Party base. They come from the Democrat Party base. George Stephanopoulos, Jake Tapper, Dana Bash, if that is her name, MSNBC, CNN, are loaded with Democrat Party operatives and activists, the most radical Marxist Islamist professors and guests. They don't represent you, the American people. The New York Times, you expect them to print the truth? The New York Times lied about Stalin and the slaughter of the Ukrainians in 1932. The New York Times covered up the Holocaust until 1944, when most European Jews were already exterminated. The New York Times helped to install Castro, a mass-murdering, genocidal communist who they portrayed as a small-D Democrat. And now they all want you to believe That Kamala Harris isn't Kamala Harris. And so they pour their own opinions, their own objectives, their own ideologies into a vessel. Into a woman who is not smart. Into a woman who is unaccomplished. In a woman who shouldn't be anywhere close to the presidency, let alone the vice president's into a vice presidential candidate from Minnesota who's a pervert, who's a liar, who went AWOL. The American media are the Pravda media. Putin would be proud if he had such a state-run media. The American media are the Al Jazeera media of Qatar. Qatar would be proud if they had such a state-run media. The media in America have destroyed the entire notion of a free press. In recent decades, the corporatists, the massive global corporations, have taken over these news platforms. They don't serve America's interests by giving us the facts and letting us make the decisions. Again, the American media is not just the Democrat Party media, it's the Democrat Party base media. And the Democrat Party base is essentially populated by two types of people. Low information voters and fanatics, that is zealots. And they serve both their interests, if you follow them closely. Telling them lies, repeating them, big lies, like propagandists do in fascistic and Marxist autocratic regimes. You are not watching a small-D Democratic election for the most powerful office on the face of the earth. You're watching a dictator's election. This is a dictator's election. 
with a dictator, Kamala Harris, and the dictator's party, the Democrat Party, and the dictator's media. They put out positions. They put out talking points. They put out arguments. They put out statements. They repeat them again and again and again. They air them on television. They air them on radio. They run them in their newspapers and now on social media. They say the same thing, if not similar things. And conversely and simultaneously, they do. They do what state-run media do. They do what Putin's media does. They do what Al Jazeera's media does, which is censor, smear, character assassinate the opposition. They've turned J.D. Vance into Kamala Harris and Kamala Harris into J.D. Vance. They've taken a man who really lifted himself up by his bootstraps out of the poorest kind of upbringing in Appalachia. Who volunteered for the Marines after 9-11. Who wound up at Yale Law School. Who became a successful capitalist. The American dream, the American experiment in this one individual. And they've tried to destroy him. To turn him into some kind of racist while he's married to a brown woman. To turn him into some kind of a a buffoon while he's got a very high IQ. And meanwhile, they turn the racist, bigot, anti-Semite, Kamala Harris, who is surrounded by anti-Semites, who is surrounded by Hamas supporters, who is surrounded by Islamists. I don't give a damn who she's married to. And I can present you with a list. Who has said the most horrific blood libels against Jews, against the Israelis, who's helped trigger the terrorism that is taking place in the Middle East today and the death of the hostages by her words, by her absence. At a congressional event for the Prime Minister of Israel. They try to turn her into something she surely is not. A statesman. A thinker. An achiever. A leader. They tell you she wasn't border czar when she was. They repeat her positions. Now she opposes taxing tips. When she was the 51st vote in the United States Senate. To hire 87,000 new IRS agents for the purpose, in significant part, of going after all you waiters and waitresses, the hospitality people who they said, you're not paying your taxes on your tips. You are targeted. We talked about it here a couple of years ago. She was the deciding vote. Biden signed the law. She comes out and says, I'm opposed to taxing tips. He comes out over the weekend and says, so am I. And the media play along. Why? Because they're not an American media. They're not a free press. They're the media of the Democrat Party base. They are trying to influence the low information voters and the zealots. They know it's a close election. They know it comes down to a handful of states. They don't give a crap about the 330 million Americans in this country. They are focused like a laser on 40, 50, 100, 120,000 people. That's it. That's it. Kamala Harris now says she's going to hire more border agents. Has she not been vice president for four years, America? Was she not the border czar? Now she says she wants to hire more border agents. She's the one who said she wants to defund ICE. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. Oh, okay. Now she says she wants to bring prices down. She's the one who supported the biggest, profligate, unbelievable spending in American history. Trillions of dollars in spending on the Inflation Reduction Act. The Biden-Harris Inflation Reduction Act, which was trillions of dollars to left-wing climate change, degrowth groups. Now she tells you she wants to lower prices. No, she doesn't. 
How's she going to lower gasoline prices when she opposes gasoline? Oh, she doesn't oppose it anymore. You got that, Pennsylvania? You've got that, America? She wanted to shut down every fracking operation, every oil pipeline, every gas station, every gas pump. That was her position. She is now, today as I speak, supported by every radical extremist, socialist, Marxist, anti-capitalist organization. But she says now she's for fracking. And the media say it's okay. Are we the people, the progeny of the Revolutionary War, the progeny of Washington, Jefferson, Madison, and Franklin, the progeny of Lincoln, Reagan, the progeny of the greatest industrial might on the face of the earth, the progeny of the greatest founding document and constitution on the face of the earth. Are we going to allow ourselves to succumb to bald-faced lies, to people who will say anything and do anything and preach anything, depending on whom they're speaking to, depending on the moment, in order to seize control from you and me, in order to seize power to confer it upon themselves and their friends, in order to prevent us from living prosperous lives and our children from living prosperous lives, telling us what kind of car we can drive, what kind of fan we can put in our house, what kind of light bulb we can put in our home, telling us the little things, the big things, and the middle things, telling us everything we must do. Are we going to bend to this? This is a woman who has surrounded herself with people who hate America. This is a woman who has surrounded herself with people who hate capitalism. This is a woman who has surrounded herself with people who hate American citizenry. This is a woman who has surrounded herself with, well, with Soros prosecutors, with Islamists and Hamas supporters, with anti-Semites, with Iranian sympathizers. She just chose a Chai Com, a communist Chinese special pleader to be her running mate, a pervert who doesn't believe mothers and fathers should decide what kind of genitalia their children can have if that child can get to his state in Minnesota, and you and I are supposed to stand here and believe he's some kind of a war hero, he's some kind of a moderate, oh, he, it's time for joy. Don't you understand? Joy. Let him eat cake. Let him eat cake. It's not up to Donald Trump and J.D. Vance on their own. It's not up to the Republican National Committee on its own. It's not up to Fox and Conservative Talk Radio and other conservative outlets on their own. It's we. We the people. This is our damn country, and they're stealing it from us. They're stealing our children from us. They're destroying their futures. They're destroying the future of this country. The propagandists on TV, these filthy, poisonous, cancerous liars who call themselves Democrats, the contemptible, contemptible media that uses the free press that uses the free press that my ancestors fought for and your ancestors fought for to advance an autocratic notion of what this country should be, to lie to the American people, to be demagogues and propagandists, day in friggin' day out. Are we going to succumb to this? I sure as hell hope not. 